Hi friends, Wes here, checking in with a new episode of the Vinyl Survivor, I believe we're on Vinyl Survivor number 115. Uh, I actually had some notes written for this episode, and then for some reason I can't find them anywhere, so we're just going to have to wing this one. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, let's go ahead and get into it. As usual, 10 records up on the chopping block, new to my ears from the inbox, or new purchases, and I'll let you know what I think of each one, and uh, let you know whether they're staying in the collection or going away. Uh, the first album I have here is what I believe to be the fourth album from the indie rock band The National. This is titled The Boxer, or just Boxer, sorry. Um, the National is a band that you probably know, or you might not know you know them, their music <clears throat> uh, often gets used in TV shows. Uh, it's sort of modern indie rock with uh, the lead singer has a very deep, unique, rich voice, uh, just syrupy, rich, deep voice that's very unique and very distinct. Uh, so you might know the song uh, Fake Empire, uh, the lead track there. It's been used a lot in uh, TV shows, I think. I, did, I definitely recognize the song. Uh, yeah, the Boxer is just a really cool modern indie rock band. I really like really like their stuff. Picked this one up uh, last year. Uh, this is a photo of the band actually performing at the producer uh, Peter Cadis. Uh, that's them performing at his wedding. Insert liner notes on it. And then the vinyl itself is on this cool translucent yellow vinyl. Uh, really nice looking. Uh, really cool. Glad to have that. And this is on the Beggar's Banquet label. Great label. Uh, so that's the National with Boxer staying in the collection. Next up here, got a 12-inch single. Don't normally do 12-inch singles, but uh, this one I really actually enjoyed. And that is the 12-inch single to Should the World Fail to Fall Apart by Peter Murphy, originally of Bauhaus. This is his solo project uh, from his first solo album from 1986, I believe. Um, and actually, on this one, I prefer the the B-sides, I guess you could call them. The other, there's a tr uh, track Confessions and Jamal that are also both from that same album. Uh, I like those tracks better than Should the World Fail to Fall Apart. Uh, but overall, just good, interesting music. Uh, uh, you know, Bauhaus is more of a, uh, a gothic kind of sound, and this is him moving more towards a pop, 80s pop, uh, alternative pop kind of sound, uh, you know, stuff like uh, David Bowie was doing at the time, Iggy Pop, um, definitely has that kind of sound, maybe more of like a... Uh, uh, Brian Eno, David Byrne kind of thing, very, very pop, it's pop music, but it's it's definitely more unique and different and not just going for the mainstream kind of thing, so really cool sound here, really liked it. Said on the Beggar's Banquet label, I don't know if that's a custom label or not, uh, but it's just a cool 12 inch, found this uh, for, uh, I think I paid a dollar for it at the uh, uh, Habitat for Humanities thrift store. Uh, so that was a nice find. All right, next up, uh, one of the reasons why this, this episode has been delayed so long. Uh, this is the album by the Nice, self-titled album. Uh, don't remember the date on this one. 68, I think. Uh, and of course, we just recently lost, uh, just recently lost Keith Emerson, uh, one of the founding members of the Nice. Uh, uh, so this is it's somewhat similar to Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Uh, maybe a little bit more just straight ahead 60s rock. Uh, but definitely a lot of keyboards on here with Keith Emerson being on here. It definitely has an ELP kind of sound to it. But really good music, really enjoyable. And then this one happens to be on the Immediate Records label. Uh, so this is definitely an early pressing of this. Uh, Immediate got bought by Atlantic, I think. Um, uh, they got bought out, uh, and uh, later pressings of this were pressed on uh, that label. Uh, but this is a nice early pressing of this. And yeah, really nice, slightly progressive 60s rock kind of sound. So really 
good stuff here. The nice. That one's staying in the collection. Next up, the soundtrack to one of my favorite TV shows uh, right now. It's Orange is the New Black from Netflix. Uh, just a really fun show. Really enjoy watching it. It's funny. It's it's intriguing. It's interesting. It's uh, it's funny. It's just a really funny show, and uh, really I, I really like the characters. It's kind of a character piece kind of thing, and I really like the characters, and it's fun to watch them uh, go through their lives and stuff. So. Uh, really cool. This has the, the title track that was written by Regina Spector for the show. You've got Time, which opens up every show. And then uh, you got a bunch of cool just tracks on here. You got uh, I'll Take You There by Staple Singers. You got Milkshake by Kellis. Sunday Morning, The Velvet Underground, and Nico. A bunch of cool stuff on here. A bunch of cool tracks on here from the show. And it sort of brings you back to, to the show. And of course, since this is the orange is the new black... It's on orange vinyl. Really cool sort of marbleized orange vinyl. I don't think the camera is really going to pick it up too well. Uh, my color, my white balance is a little off here. But just a really fun show. Glad I found the soundtrack to this. It's something I wanted. It's something I tried to, I think I tried to buy the single uh, to You Got Time for Record Store Day one year and it was gone by the time I got there. Uh, so it was really cool to find the entire soundtrack and be able to pick that up. And I think I actually got this out of the clearance bin at, um, what is it, American Outfitters, or what's that Outfitters store? Urban Outfitters, that's, that's the store I can never think of, Urban Outfitters. Uh, yeah, I got that out of the clearance bin for like 10 bucks, so that was a cool find. Uh, next up, we got an album by the Fat Boys. This is titled On and On, a rapper introduced by Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. Uh, this is a very late Fat Boys album, 1989 on this one, so very, very late. I think they maybe did one more album after this. Uh, this is just, it's its not good at all, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Didn't really care for this one at all. It's the Fat Boys trying to do a lot of different things. They're, you know, hip hop has changed a lot at this point. They they kind of don't know what which way to which direction to take the group and uh, doesn't really work for me. Uh, this is a gold stamp promo, and there is the Tin Pan Apple label. It does say promotional copy on the label, but it's not a white label. It's kind of weird. This is like a black label promo, I guess you could call it. Um, but yeah, not not recommended for uh, you know a Fat Boys kind of thing. It's not very good. Uh, it's some of their weakest stuff, in my opinion. Uh, but since I'm a completist, or or since I love the Fat Boys so much, I'm gonna keep that around. I can't I can't let myself get rid of that one. Uh, but not recommended. Next thing I got here to talk about is an album by Paul Simon titled Hearts and Bones from 1983, I believe. 19, yep, 1983 on this one. This is the album he did right before he did Graceland. It's definitely very experimental. It's very interesting. I really was shocked by how much I like this album a lot. This is a really great album. If, 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 you, you, know, if you haven't heard this Paul Simon album and you like... Graceland, or you like the self-titled debut, or if you like any Paul Simon stuff and you haven't heard this one, this one is really, really good. Some really great songs on here, some really great writing on here. Uh, this was started out, uh, was meant to be a Simon and Garfunkel album. Uh, started He started working on this right after they did the concert in Central Park. Things fell apart, and unfortunately, it never happened. There was meant to be a new Paul, a new uh, Simon and Garfunkel album in the '80s, and it just never happened. So the, the stuff he was working on turned into this album, uh, and it's just really good. The the, the uh, title track "Hearts and Bones" is great. Uh, there's a "Think Too Much." There's two different versions of the song "Think Too Much," or sort of a, a "Think Too Much" and a "Think Too Much" reprise uh, that are really really good. Uh, just yeah, I was I was shocked by how much I like this album, and uh, definitely recommend this checking this one out. The inner sleeve with some lyrics, liner notes, and all that good stuff. The vinyl itself on Warner Brothers. Uh, so that's Paul Simon Hearts and Bones. 
thumbs up from me. I really was surprised by how, how good this was. So uh, check it out. It's a good one. All right, next up, moving in a completely different direction. This is an album from the Glitch Mob titled Love, Death, Immortality. Uh, a, a, a modern, electronic, can be labeled as dubstep, I guess, kind of group. Decent stuff. I really, I was, I was really, I really enjoyed this. I dug it. I don't know if I would collect a lot of Glitch Mob albums, but uh, picked this up in the clearance bin again at Urban Outfitters and really, really dug it. it was, it's a fun listen. Uh, just really cool, sort of modern, glitchy, dubby kind of electronic music, and uh, definitely, definitely enjoyed it. Cool. Inner sleeves there. There's one of them. Sort of pattern again. Yeah, really neat artwork on this one. Uh, really nice 2LP set, black vinyl. So that is the Glitch Mobs Love, Death, Immortality. Another one staying in the collection. I, I dug it. I thought it was good. Um, as I said, not something I would necessarily buy more of, but uh, a cool find for a, a good price. So Next thing I have to talk about, I think this is the 14th album by the band Sparks. This is titled Music That You Can Dance To, 1986 on this one. Uh, Sparks are, are a group that sort of changed their style throughout the years. They started in the early 70s and sort of molded their styles over the years as, as tastes in music changed. Uh, so this being an album from 86, it's very synth pop, dancey kind of of record pretty good I, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed listening to this one it you know fits into my sort of synth pop kind of vibe thing that I like uh, very 80s sounding you know very fun upbeat kind of 80s sounding even though the 80s weren't necessarily an upbeat decade uh, weren't necessarily a great time for us but uh, yeah just a, a fun album uh, definitely enjoyed this one and this is something you can pick up in dollar bins and stuff like that so if you're into the 80s you're into synth pop kind of stuff uh, check them out. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff here. And this one comes on the Curb Records label, part of MCA Records. Um, so yeah, it sparks music that you can dance to. Uh, definitely recommend it if you're into 80s pop kind of stuff. Uh, good stuff, but as I said, sparks are a group that's changed their sound over time. So, you know, if you go back to the 70s, it's going to be more rocky kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, interesting group, and I hope to explore more of their music uh, moving forward. All right, next up, sort of another uh, in the modern pop genre. This is the album from the Dum Dum Girls titled Too True from 2014. I believe this is their third album. Features the title track Too True to Be Good. Um, uh, I believe it's an all-girl group. And really interesting, just sort of modern pop music, a little bit rock and roll, a little bit sort of sh uh, chill wave kind of pop music uh, on the sub pop label. Insert and lyrics and liner notes. I really like the artwork on this this album. It fits, fits the music well and it's just cool artwork and I really do like that. This is just on black vinyl. Uh, again, another one of the clearance pickups from Urban Outfitters. I think I paid $5 for this, so it was really reasonably priced, and I'm, I'm glad I picked it up. It was an enjoyable an enjoyable find in uh, a cool sort of modern pop group. So Dum Dum Girls, Too True, staying in the collection. Really enjoyed this one. Okay, and lastly, but definitely not leastly, I'm kind of burying the lead. I hate that this one's at the end of the video, but those of you who have stayed around this long, uh, you're in for a treat. This is the album Shock Therapy, My Unshakable Belief, 1987 uh, on this one. Uh, Shock Therapy were a band out of, out of Detroit. So it, and it's in the late 80s, so this band melds an industrial sound with a synth pop sound with a punk sound. So all those genres sort of thrown into a, a basket, stirred up, and just incredible music comes out of it. It just has all those aspects in one, in one piece, and I was blown away by this. This is a really great, great, great band. Uh, 
I understand there was a lot of problems with drugs and, and fighting and stuff. This group didn't have a whole lot of output. Um, but this was just a really cool mixture of those genres. And, and you know, there's, I'm, not a, I'm not really a punk fan, but mixing punk with, with uh, the synth pop and, and the, uh, the industrial kind of sounds really intrigued me and it really interests me. So it's, it's sort of another one of those inroads to punk music for me uh, to be able to hear stuff like this where it's blending different, different genres. And I really enjoyed this quite a bit so highly recommend shock therapy if you ever see their records uh, pick them up and this came out on the fundamental records label label i'm not familiar with um, there. so yeah definitely the most interesting uh pick of this batch i would have to say R really interesting music and if you're a fan of any of those types of music I say check check these guys out. It's really it's a really cool blend of music and really interesting and uh, really great stuff. And I hope to find more of their stuff in the future. Uh, so that's going to do it for this episode of the Vinyl Survivor. Thank you for tuning in, especially if you stayed this long. If you aren't already subscribed, please subscribe, and uh, you'll be uh, you'll be able to find out when I upload more episodes of the Vinyl Survivor or other videos that I upload. Uh, thank you again for watching. Have a great day, great night, whatever it is. Enjoy it. Love your music, and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.